Hey everyone, okay, so today we're gonna to be talking about how to be beautiful. Now this is not your average YouTube video where I'm gonna do this a demonstration and show you all the tips and tricks to be beautiful. It's not like that. Also bear in mind that my channel and these videos are aimed at adults. This video in particular is not aimed at anybody other than adults. So if you have children or younger people that are watching it, take note. Okay, so let's start. How to be beautiful. This is the ramblings of a 40 year old man. So I hope you like it. Okay, so number one, give a shit. People that think something of themselves, they give a shit. They're clean, they're tidy, they take pride in their appearance. I'm not talking about whether or not you're wearing designer clothes or whether you have oodles of money, but they give a shit. They do the things every day to look their very best. And there are lots of, um, lots and lots of um, people I know who I could give you, um, you know, stories about. But the truth of the matter is, you need to give a shit about the way you look and the way you feel. Now, for some people, that just means brushing your teeth and going out. That's great. For others, it means a full face of makeup. All that matters is what it means to you to actually care about yourself. So it doesn't mean lashes and lips and all of that. It just means that you're doing the very best for yourself every day to put your best self forward. So that's really all that step means, is that you give a shit about the way you look. That's all. And it's not narcissistic to care about your appearance, to want to um, look good, because looking good often will make you feel better about yourself. Be kind. It takes a lot in this world to be kind. Oftentimes it's easier to just go and blurt something out that's unpleasant and, and mean and hurtful to somebody. And, but being kind is a step to being beautiful because it, they're all stepping stones, the, these things that I'm speaking about that create beauty in somebody. It's not about the perfect cheekbone. And being kind is one of them. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, be kind to animals. These things make people beautiful. When somebody is being malicious and spiteful, how you react to it, it's not that you shouldn't be hurt or offended or have to retaliate or, you know, or give your side across, of course you do. But there are ways of doing it and being able to hold yourself while in the eye of the storm and not going that low and not digging in with that kind of venom is so beautiful to me. It, it really is. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing that I feel, and I love the Real Housewives of everything. I just, the Housewives of New York, the Housewives of Beverly Hills, the Housewives of Sydney, oh my God, Sydney, just all of them, right? I love it, I just love watching it because it is so far removed from my reality. It's totally nothing to do with my reality. And this season on the Housewives of Beverly Hills, for Erica Jane, now, her behavior, in my opinion, this season was so unpleasant. It was, it was mean, mean, mean. And, and I found her to be very beautiful. And I don't just mean the exterior, but the way she carried herself, the way she spoke. She, was, she had a way of speaking. It was crass, but it was, there was something about it that was authoritative and it was strong and it was beautiful. And then this season, she was just so unpleasant to, you know, a couple of the people, just one in particular, so unpleasant. And it just, I just suddenly was watching it going, you're no longer beautiful to me. You, you're, you're not, you don't come across as a nice person. And she probably is lovely, but this wasn't being, this didn't come across. And that's how you can go from being beautiful to not so beautiful by how you treat others. I've met loads of people who on the outside are stunning and inside there's not much going on. They're quite unpleasant. And that beautiful exterior just fades away into nothing. So be kind, be good. Okay, be sexy. Now listen, before you all go, I ain't sexy. I don't think any of us feel we're sexy, right? I don't and some of the most gorgeous people I know, they never refer to themselves as sexy. And I think, oh my God, look at you, you're so sexy. But it's hard to view ourselves as beautiful or handsome or sexy because we don't feel that way. 
We've got a big stomach, our thighs are too big, we've got a big nose, our ears, whatever it is, there's always stuff about ourselves that makes us feel unsexy. And this is the beautiful thing about it, is that those things, let's just talk about it from an animalistic point of view. Those things on your body, right? The things that you don't like, whether it's your stomach or your thighs or your ass or your breasts or whatever it is, right? Whatever it is. There is somebody out there right now, right at this second, touching themselves, thinking of those very same things that you don't like. We like what we like. And we, it, there seems to be this misconception that we just like beautiful faces. We just like perfect bodies. That ain't the case. Let me give myself as an example. I couldn't give two shits about somebody's six pack. I don't like it on some, I mean, I don't hate it. I don't find it attractive. It's not for me. It's not like if they're a really great person and they had a really rocking six pack, I'd be like, no, leave the room. But it's not something I look for. What I like in somebody is a beer belly. I like a belly on a man. I think it's really hot. And when I say these people are like, well, who do you find attractive? I'm like, well, Russell Crowe's really hot. And they're like, oh yeah, Gladiator. And I'm like, no, not Gladiator. Now, right now today, as he is, that's hot. I find stomachs hot. I can't help it. It's the way I'm made. They're just sexy. And I've got a friend, he's a lovely, lovely guy, and he hates his stomach. He's got this little sort of beer belly, and he hates it. And the whole time I'm just thinking, take your shirt off, take your shirt off, take your shirt off, because it's hot. To me, it's hot. And the things you don't like, your thighs or your breasts or your stomach, there's somebody out there that is thinking, whoa. It's hard for us to find ourselves sexy, but know that there's somebody else out there that thinks that those things on you are sexy. And if you are lucky enough to have somebody at home, somebody that you love or you're in love with or you know that you're committed to, make them feel sexy. Do something today to them that makes them feel sexy. Say it. Touch them and say, Fucking hell, you are sexy. Make them feel sexy. There is nothing more attractive to when somebody when somebody tells you you're sexy. There's some. It is just the most incredible feeling to to think there's somebody out there that thinks that about you because you don't feel it. And when somebody does that to you, it is mind blowing. And if you have the option today, right now, to go and make somebody else feel like that, bloody well do it. Just do it because it will make them feel good and that makes you feel good as well. You know, your partner is sexy. Go for it. And also, while we're on the subject of um, sexiness and gorgeousness and all the things that make us beautiful, they say that sex is about 20% of a relationship. But if you're not having sex with your partner, it's 80% of the problem. And I think that's quite true. The only thing I kind of feel with regards to this, and, and it is that if you have somebody that you're able to make love to, then I hope you are. I really hope you are. Don't lose that spark. Because trust me, from somebody that has gone years and years and years without any form of physical contact, trust me, if you have somebody at home, make love to them, because you will miss it when it's gone. Don't listen to beauty gurus, and that includes me. We speak about the things we like, the things we enjoy, the products we love, um, the techniques we adore. But sometimes we just talk a load of shit, and you've just got to say, no, that's not for me. And that's absolutely fine. So I don't like blush on the apples of the cheek for most people. But you love it. Go for it. Don't listen to a word I say. You take what matters to you and leave the rest behind because that's all makeup is. It is about making yourself feel good, however you go about that. And it might be the thinnest brow and the blackest lip and the bluest eyeshadow you've ever seen. If you love that, then go for it. That's what makes you you. It makes you beautiful. That's what makes you feel beautiful. And if I don't like it or I'm talking about a technique that you do, don't listen to a word I say. What do I know anyway? You know, I'm nobody. You've got to do what makes you happy and screw everything else and all the other nonsense that all of us beauty gurus 
spill out to you. If it doesn't work, ta-da. And finally, pick a style, and if you can, stick to it. Now, this is where you could be like, ah, ta-da, like I just said in the previous one. I'm gonna name two famous people, and just to give you an example, um, Jennifer Aniston and Sandra Bullock. They basically had the same style, hair and makeup, for 20 years, and they literally haven't aged. And especially in the case of Jennifer Aniston, when you see her close up, you can see that she's not had Botox or fillers or any of that stuff. It is evident on her face, but her style hasn't changed. She's been the same way pretty much the last 20, 25 years. And that's, and the same with Sandra Bullock, that's how they, they look younger because they're not changing their styles all the time with different haircuts and different eyeshadow. And it's very, very similar. And by finding a style that works for you and sticking to it, you can quite literally hold off the aging process because people are seeing you continuously just looking the same. Now that doesn't mean you can't play with color and all that kind of stuff, but find a style that works for you, a haircut that works for you, makeup that works for you, and just think, you found it, you found Nirvana, you found what makes you look good, and then stick to it as best you can because that will make you look gorgeous. And there you go, that is it. That is the ramblings of me. And I don't know if I've made any sense, and I'm sure some of you will let me know, but rather than do a basic shite video on how to get a higher cheekbone, let's remember what beauty really is. Beauty is about being kind, it's about being nice, it's about caring enough about yourself. It's not about whether your nose is perfect or your cheeks are perfect or you know, your body is amazing, because I like a beer belly. I find it really hot, really hot. We love what we love and we find what we find attractive. And to me, stomachs, hot. Ugh. Somebody that can make me laugh, really hot. Somebody that's kind, hot. All those things build up until you've got somebody in front of you that is beautiful. And they may not have that perfect face, but to you, the way that you look at them, they are beautiful and they are sexy and you're gonna let them know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. And remember, you are beautiful. As cliche as it sounds, there is something about you. You are the only person like you in the world. So put your best foot forward, be good, be nice, be sexy. Thank you, bye-bye.